we're going to talk about deception. Now, before sin or torment or suffering ever entered the world, deception did first. That's how all of it came about. And deception can lead to demonization, but it can lead to damnation, which is far more serious. So deception is, is the core, is the, the, the primary thing that, that even needs, the res, needs deliverance in the, in the second place. Um, uh, and this deception is the New Age deception. Now, I came from the New Age, and the New Age is a very strong deception. The New Age is, you know, it's crafted and it's, it's, it's very scientifically twisted with all the ancient religions. And I, I want to encourage anyone watching online right now, if you know people in the New Age, they're going to need to hear this message. Share this broadcast. Smash that like button right now so this can get across YouTube. And, and YouTube's going to promote it more. So click that like button. Share the broadcast to everyone who's watching. And we're going to dismantle this New Age deception because all of you probably know people that, that are into these things, that are into these things I'm about to describe, that are, you know, not as much uh, passionate about the Lord, that are not, you know, attending church as much, that don't really have a fire for Jesus because they're, they're into these things. They're into these things like um, um, energy healing and they're into the deep meditation and they have their crystals and they do yoga and they're, they're into astrology and horoscopes. And it slowly deviates them away. And when I was in the New Age, the people that I met, most of them were prior Christians who grew up in the church. And this is the fastest growing spirituality in the United States and becoming around the world, especially in Western countries. This is a very, very big deception. And it leads to people's demonization. And it leads to people's damnation. Now, I'm going to dismantle it for you guys and go over the core doctrines of the new age so you can understand this so you can witness to people who are in it so you can understand you know what the animal is the the first doctrine is reincarnation reincarnation is the belief that we live multiple lifetimes not just multiple infinite lifetimes over and over and over again until we break the cycle of reincarnation now, these different Eastern religions like Buddhism and Hinduism and Taoism have different means to breaking the cycle of reincarnation that they teach. But the core doctrine is that they're, 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 they're recycling and being reborn. So Satan even uses this to try and uh, uh, misrepresent the, the born-again experience of a Christian and get people to think, oh, you know, Christianity is talking about rebirth you know, Hinduism, Buddhism, all these things do as well. And many New Agers fall to this because in the New Age, these, these psychics who tell you past life regressions, you know, you, you wonder, why do I act the way I am? Why do I have this sort of personality? Why am I like shy and more quiet, but they're more, you know, outspoken? And, oh, it's because in a past life, this is, this is who you were and this is what your soul is needing to uh, uh, learn and progress in over your lifetime. So it becomes their spiritual pursuit on, on, on breaking the cycle and learning everything to know, they need to know to break out of the cycle of reincarnation. And for those who uh, know about the Dalai Lama, the leader of Buddhism, this man, this soul, literally believes that he is the 14th incarnation from Buddha. You know, he's, he's just a guy like us, a toddler when he was selected as the Dalai Lama because he was reborn into this region. He is a literal soul who believes that he is the 14th incarnation, the same deity, because they don't even believe in souls. They believe in this kind of like avatar deity that reincarnates, the same one coming from 14 generations ago. Half a billion people follow him. Half a billion. He speaks at universities around the world. He spoke at my university when I was there, and I was deep in the New Age. I really wanted to see him. But it was so packed, it couldn't get seats, you have to reserve seats. And he's a very big, not just Buddhist teacher, but New Age teacher. Because people who want to feel spiritual, they read these articles about compassion and love and, and all these different things that kind of draws them in. And then they start listening to the Dalai Lama. They start listening to these other teachers. This man literally believes he's reincarnated 14 times. Now we know as Christians who, who know the word of God, the truth that it's appointed for man once to die, then the judgment. As Hebrews 9.27, it's very clear. Now, there is a second death where souls are put into the lake of fire, but there is one 
lifetime we live here on earth in this reality, we don't live over and over and over and over again. We don't need to go to psychics to try and find out why is this, you know, why did my dad leave me? Or why did my, you know, mom die at this age? Like, why? They're, they're seeking these questions. We don't go to psychics. We go to the Lord. We go to God. And we go to the word of God to find our truth. Because you start going to these deceptions, you will not only just get demonized, but you can be damned because that's what Satan wants. He wants the soul for eternity. He'll send the demons to torment, but he wants your soul. And what we as Christians know that Jesus Christ is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. And that we live once and we live for him. If you think reincarnation, even I know Christians who believe in reincarnation, and it gives this false sense of second chance. You know, like this lifetime isn't all that you have. You can, um, y- y- this false sex second chance makes you not value this lifetime as much, not value what you're going to do in this lifetime, not value the, the need for repentance because, oh, you know, I, I might have a second chance in another lifetime. And there's a lot of other teachings that they go into the Bible to even take verses from the Bible to teach this. But this is the first main deception of New Agers that they fall into. It's reincarnation. And the second is the, the idea that you can become God. Now, it might sound crazy, you know, if you've known the truth, if you, if you know the word, it might sound crazy that you can become God. But what was the original, original deception to Adam and Eve? What did the serpent say to them? He said, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This deception is still around, church. This deception is very much still around. And people who are seeking God unknowingly are falling to this deception because it fills this void of, you know, powerlessness. People want to have control over their lives. People want to have power over their lives. You know, it feels amazing when you you think more highly of yourself when you're suffering with insecurity, when you're suffering with confusion, identity issues. And what the New Age teaches is that our goal is to literally just remember that we are God. Because the Big Bang Theory, 13.8 billion years ago, some random thing happened and, and atoms exploded, matter was created, time, everything came about. We have no idea how, but the Big Bang Theory is taught in school, it's taught in university, it's taught as, as normal truth, even though it's a theory. Now, this extension of time, over time, evolution started, planets formed, stars stormed, they believe, formed, they believe, you know, biology, life then began, and now we're here. But this evolution is still going. But if you try and transcend through meditation in your mind, you can actually feel and go back to that original state where you are God and that we are all connected. So the New Agers believe this, that we are an extension of God and we need to go through spiritual evolution and meditation and a spiritual discipline to to remember it and actually live in that state of consciousness, of that God state of consciousness. The word yoga itself to be, means to be yoked to, to be yoked to Brahma, which is the God consciousness. This is the spiritual discipline of yoga. It's not just stretching and, you know, anatomy and, and being healthy. It's a spiritual philosophy and discipline. And, and it's merging with God. It's called moksha in Hinduism, nirvana in Buddhism. This is all the Eastern religions, and it's coming to the U.S., and it's pulling, right, pulling people right out of the church. And you probably know people who are, are, are in this stuff, who feel like they've found the truth, who feel like they're more awake than you, more enlightened than you, because they know all these different philosophies and these religions and these secret practices. It's deception. It's complete deception. We are not God. God is God. Jesus Christ is God. He is the only God. We are not God. We are separate created beings. The Bible even says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. We were created by God. You were created by God. You don't need to remember that you are God to fill this powerlessness. You can know God. You can know who he is. You can have a relationship with him. He knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly what you need. And you can form that relationship with him by believing in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the gospel. This is the truth. And Satan is really trying to forge these deceptions that are very cunning, like Paul said, you know, that the simplicity of the gospel, people wouldn't be led away by these devised fables and these, you know, complexities 
led away from the simplicity of the gospel, but it's happening right now. It's happening right now. That's why the church is decreasing in its numbers, and why, that's why this new age religion is becoming so, so popular. Number three, humans are actually divinely perfect. You know, there's this idea that humans are perfect, but we've forgotten our divine nature, just like that we are God, but we've forgotten. It's this, this negative, any sense of negativity about yourself, any shame about yourself, any acknowledgement of guilt, acknowledgement of sin is to be rejected because there's a doctrine, the law of attraction. If you have that in your mind, you're going to attract that in your life. You know, they take the Bible verse, as a man thinks in his heart, so, so he becomes. If you're thinking these things that you're evil, that you have a fallen nature, that's shame, that's bringing you down, and that's, that's lowering your consciousness from going up in spiritual evolution. It completely rejects the doctrine of sin, of our sin nature. And if you reject that, you, you, you don't see the, the, the necessity for salvation. You don't see the necessity for forgiveness of your sin. You don't see where you have actually done evil things in your life, where you've thought evil things, where you've had evil intentions. You try and reject it, and then you don't realize the need for a savior. You don't realize the need for Jesus Christ to come into your life, to cleanse you, to make you new, and to, to, to have that born again experience. Because these deceptions are like strongholds. They're, they're built in people's minds and they prevent people from, from getting to the truth. They're walls that need to be broken down. And I've encountered many people who believe this stuff and I've talked about what I'm talking to you about right now. And it sl slowly increases their doubt and then the truth can pour in. But if the walls are up and you don't know how to break down the wall, you're not going to be able to pour in that truth to their soul for them to be saved because Jesus wants to reach them. Paul wasn't just casting out demons and healing the sick. He was, he was having you know, intellectual discussions with the Greeks who thought that the cross was a bunch of foolishness. He was you know, apologetic in his approach to many souls because many souls need that approach to be saved. Many souls need that approach to come to the knowledge of Christ. Other souls, it's just they believe without seeing. You know, there's an emotional understanding. There's an emotional connection to the Lord. But we know in the word of God, it is very, very clear that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23, all have sinned. We're not perfect. We're not these perfect people who need to meditate and understand we're perfect and anything against that is bad. We're all have sinned. There's no one righteous, not even one. To, to say this to a new ager is such like, it's almost like blasphemy in their minds when they have a such strong stronghold of the law of attraction that they've used self-help books. How many times have you read a self-help book where it's talking about, you know, overcoming these things and controlling your mind, having power over your mind? Before you know it, they'll get to the law of attraction. Before you know it, people who are trying to get better in business will start believing in the law of attraction. And this seed that Satan plants will deviate them from the truth of Christ, from the truth of the word. And they'll start to fall to more deceptions because they're not discerning of what's entering their mind. They're not discerning of the implications of what is entering their mind. And this is how people fall away. It's a slow process for many. And even the idea that if you feel something negative, that that's bad for your spiritual evolution. Paul said, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow leads to death. Having a godly sorrow about our sin, about our evil nature, brings us to repentance. It lets us be washed and it leads to our salvation. It doesn't manifest negativity in our life and make us depressed. It makes us more holy. It makes us more like him and it lets his image be formed in us. That's the whole goal is to be formed in the image of Christ. And godly sorrow is an essential part of that. Number four, this was the biggest for me. My whole salvation hinged on this one intellectual idea, doctrine, was that Jesus Christ is just some enlightened man. I had heard the gospel. I had met Christians who were witnessing to me. And the one thing I did not believe was that Jesus Christ is God incarnate, the one and only begotten son that Jesus Christ is God. I just didn't believe that. What I thought that was Jesus was a man who reached Christ's consciousness, was a very enlightened man, 
And it's been misunderstood over the years as the church tried to dominate people and get people to worship merely a man instead of themselves and the true power that's within and the true power that they wield. You see, there's an evil force. I believed in an evil force, but this evil force is trying to take people's power away from themselves to make people look exteriorly instead of internally at their true power. It's all very believable. It's all very, very believable. And this one truth I did not believe. And the second I did, my entire life changed forever. The New Agers who see this testimony that I have, they think that, you know, my spiritual progression and, and all these things is merely I'm, 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 I'm capping out, I'm falling into a dogmatic trap that I've taken this idea of Jesus to merely satisfy my emotions that this idea of Jesus as all-loving, as all-knowing, is just a psychological construct that I've made to, to fill certain emotional um, needs that I have. And this is what they believe for many of us. This is what they believe for most Christians, that Jesus is not God. You know, he did not resurrect. He is not actually living right now. So it must be a psychological idea that we're worshiping in church. And as we feed this idea, we're generating positive emotions, we're generating love and happiness in our heart, and that's what produces a better life. It's not actually Jesus Christ himself guiding us, speaking to us, and healing us. It's the mere psychological concept. So this is where the law of attraction, they try and say, hey, see, if that works for you, that's good, but I have my own thing. Whatever leads to just happiness, because happiness is worshiped instead of truth. Now we know the Bible says Jesus Christ is the unique son of God, born of a virgin who raised from the dead on the third day. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham existed, Jesus Christ is. He is beyond time. He is eternal. He is the beginning and the end. He's not just some soul who came here or reincarnated here and is trying to guide us to Christ consciousness. He is the literal Savior. He is literally God. In Colossians 1, verse 15 through 17, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. Jesus Christ created everything. He created all of us. All things were created through him, for him, by him. He's before all things and in him all things consist. He's not another man who reached Christ consciousness. He is the true, only begotten son of God. And if you believe in him, you can have eternal life. You can live forever. You can know who you truly are. You don't need to get into these new age practices and these new age meditations and spend your lifetime in this formulaic works-based salvation because that's all it is, these Eastern religions. It's a works-based breaking out of the cycle of reincarnation, but the gospel is faith-based. We're saved by faith through grace, not by works, lest any man should boast. This leads me into number five, which love, light, and truth are merely states of consciousness. So meditation, focusing your mind, spiritual discipline, can build this love, can build this light, and can build this truth in your mind and in your being. That all is energy, you know, that the matter is actually vibrating. It's actually, you know, science has proven that all is energy, even mass is energy, you know, E equals MC squared. You know, there, there's these scientific ideas that are preached in the new age that if all is energy, that our emotions are energy, and that we attract like attracts like, and what's in our mind attracts our external, then what we need to have in our mind is purely positivity. And that love, light, and truth is a consciousness you attain as you get rid of the the negative emotions of depression, the negative emotions of guilt, of shame, of anything negative towards yourself. That's how you reach nirvana in Buddhism. That's how you merge your consciousness in yoga. That's how you're yoked to the God consciousness. And that's how you break the cycle of reincarnation. So half of the world and even much of the 1040 window believes in a lot of these. There's a reason why the Spirit told Paul not to go into Asia. Why was that? You know, were there these very strong religions, these very false religions where they would have just killed him? Would they not have listened? Because this is a very, very strong 
deception that is over billions of souls, and it's coming into the U.S. Church is not as as normal anymore. It's not as, you know, just accepted as, as basic. You know, if you believe in Jesus Christ, it's kind of like you're a Jesus freak. You're, you're a Bible thumper, especially if you, you hold to the word of God very strongly. It's not normal. The spiritual is no longer believing in the word of God. Spiritual is having your crystals, is going to yoga class, is, is posting these positive things online. That's like, that's spiritual now. Going to psychics and being into the supernatural, it's not believing in the firm truth of the word of God. And that's the problem. The spiritual path is not about a state, attaining a state of consciousness. It's about righteousness. It's about purity. And there's only one man who has ever lived who has been perfectly righteous, and it's Jesus Christ. Following Buddha, following Buddha, following the Dalai Lama, following these other people, Muhammad, they've never been perfectly righteous. If you follow them and you become exactly like them, you will never be perfectly righteous. There's only one man who's ever lived and he's still alive today that you can follow and you can attain the same righteousness as him. He's brought that righteousness to earth. God came to this fallen world and he beat the game. He beat the game of sin. He beat the law. The only person to ever do that. And we can follow him and then attain what he's attained. We can, we can follow in his footsteps. We can't do it ourselves. And most people who are trying to do it themselves, they get into this bondage because it's not working. They don't know why it's not working. They're, they're getting even more depressed. They're getting even more psychotic. You watch these, you know, these testimonies, people getting out of meditation, even people going through meditation, going through their spiritual evolution. They, they say, oh, don't be, don't be uh, alarmed if you enter some psychosis for a few months. You know, you might not be recognizable to your friends and family. You might be, you know, going through this because the energies of your, your mind and your unconscious are being stirred as you approach the truth, which many souls don't access. You know, this is like the secret knowledge that you do. And, and it builds this idea that, okay, I'm going to be seen as different. I'm going to be seen as weird. And it prepares them. Satan deceives them and prepares them for all the people who are going to witness to them. For all the people who are going to come and say, hey, you know, you don't need to do that because this. And they're like, no, this, I've already known that this is, I'm going to take this path. You know, I'm going to truly do it. And they go years in this. People go to hell doing this. You know, people are walking by you in the grocery store. People you probably know right now in your mind, yet you're thinking of who are in this, who are on this path. And they can be saved. You know, they want to know Jesus. As much pride that might, they might be expressing they can be blasted right through and they can encounter God and they can follow him with their whole lives. They can go casting out demons. They can go healing the sick. They can have that same fire and dedication they had to their meditation for serving the Lord and advancing his kingdom. I've seen it time and time again and it happened to me. No one believed I could have been saved except the people witnessing. And like, honestly, I don't know how they did because I was so, I had such a big wall, but in one instant, it all came down. It was like the explosives were laid everywhere and then just bam, everything shattered. And my whole life changed. My whole trajectory changed. Now I'm serving the Lord. Now I know the truth. But I was stuck in this. I was going to have a new age ministry. I was going to have like a healing kind of ministry about it and this new age thing. And this is so popular now. And I see so many people in it. And, and us Christians just need to be aware of it. The church needs to be aware of the deception. You know, what do you, in military strategy, you don't just, you don't just, uh, you know, stay and, and, and strategize on how you're going to attack. You also have to, to strategize on the defense, on what the enemy's doing. So then you can strategize on the attack more effectively. You know, the church needs to be dynamic and adapting to the deceptions that Satan's forging right now as we speak. Us as Christians need to be aware of these things so we can truly do his will. So we can truly advance his kingdom so souls can actually be saved. And this is a modernized deception that honestly most people believe is preparing for this one world religion. Because as I'm going to get into on my last point, it's about this acceptance and tolerance. You know, you don't just see it in the spiritual, you see it in the, in the political but there's spiritual roots to this. There's spiritual roots to this. It's the new age. But number six, the creator, God, even if you believe in God, is just some unknowable force. There's no way you could actually have a personal relationship with the one who created all things, with the one who created all the galaxies and the stars and all the laws of physics, the laws of mathematics. 
There's no way you could have a, we're, we're too small of human with our minds and our emotions and our, you know, the way we interact. There's no way you could have like a, a relationship with the creator. Most people believe that it's merely an energy force or some ethereal uh, 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 just explosion, you know, that happened that you couldn't actually know, but you could tap into the energy. You can meditate and tap into this force and this energy, and that's what it's all about. They call it the source, the source of creation, or the divine, or the universe. Not God, not Jesus, not the Lord, not the master, but an energy or a force. Now, the universe was created mysteriously, and the Hindus believe that it came from a, a vibration, om. That's, that's basically the, the source of creation was om. Now, we know that God spoke creation into existence, but it deceives, it, it twists this truth by eliminating the relational and personal nature of God altogether. That merely since he spoke it, let's eliminate that he has, is a personal being, that he is Jesus Christ, and let's just say the sound is, is all of it. And so you read the Bible and you're falling into Hinduism and you're like, oh, but you know, it says spoke. So the, even the Bible talks about this. Even the Bible says spoke, and the Hindus, it's om, and it's just, it makes more sense because it's all weaved in. And if you don't see it, if you don't catch it, if you don't have that discerning, if your sword isn't sharp, you're going to get attacked, and it, the, the enemy is going to prevail. Now, the creator isn't an energy. He came to earth. He came to earth. He spoke to people. He walked around going to towns. He, he grew up. He was born through the womb of a woman. The, the literal creator of all things. He's had friends. He had, you know, his disciples that he loved, that he, he cherished, that he shared things with, that they shared things with. He was relational. He was personal. He lived the life we live. He was in a family. He had brothers, half brothers who didn't even believe in him, who thought he was a crazy lunatic, probably thought he was a schizophrenic, you know? Yet his mom the whole time knew. Mother Mary knew since the very beginning who his, her child was. But she kept secret about it, you know, because the Lord had told her. He was, he is still today very relational. And people who are stuck in this, I, I want to tell you, you can know him that way today. The Holy Spirit is here so we can know Jesus. So we can know Jesus in that way, in that personal way. Just because he, he came to earth during those 33 years and left, doesn't mean he's not around today. Doesn't mean he's around, not trying to speak to you in your thoughts right now. You know, you might be suffering some demonic thoughts, some thoughts that are, you know, hatred against yourself or suicidal thoughts, but those are demonic thoughts. Those are real beings, spiritual entities. Jesus Christ is trying to send you thoughts. He's trying to speak to you. He tries to speak to all of us. And we think if it's just some energy force we need to tap into, any, anytime God speaks to us, oh no, then, you know, no way, that's just me or that's just something else. And, and, and we, I just need to dissolve my ego and so they believe you dissolve your identity. So not only is God an energy or a force, but you are too. In, in Buddhism, the whole goal is to dissolve your ego. What makes you a person, what makes you have your desires, your personality, you have to dissolve that to then connect to that energy which is God, that force that which is God. And that this is all an illusion, the illusion of self. This is meditation that people are getting into. This is meditation that is spoken over people in a lot of yoga classes. You know, it's not just stretching in a lot of the times. They believe in these disciplines. And at the end, they'll guide you through some meditation where you're disconnecting from yourself. You're observing your thoughts as if you aren't them. And you're entering into this satanic spell. And demons flood. Demons come in. People get demonized. People then start believing like doctrines of demons, as the Bible says. In the, in the latter times, the Spirit expressly states that people will give heed to these doctrines of demons. These are doctrines of demons. These demons know the truth. They know who Jesus Christ is, and they, they craft these deceptions to steal people from knowing the truth, to snatch the seed, to choke the, the, the vine of people's salvation and their service to God. And it's very easy for people to fall around us unless we know the deception and how to witness to them. The Bible says about God that the word became flesh 
and made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is Apostle John, a man who was born during the time of Jesus, who knew Jesus Christ personally. He witnessed God in the flesh. He wrote these letters that we read today. This is an actual historical man who saw God. He didn't tap into like the yogis or the Buddhists. He didn't tap into some consciousness and come back with these revelations of the eightfold path and of your karma and of the cycle of reincarnation that you need to break. No, he was here and he knew God in physical form. And in 1 John, one of his epistles, he said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was at the father and was manifested to us. They handled God. John was on his bosom. God wants that exact same relationship today for every single person, that same intimacy, not to go into a closet and meditate, but to go to him and just connect and relate and converse with him, to pray and talk to him. Not the formulaic consciousness ascending, ascending to a higher vibration of energy to break out of this cycle of suffering. It's very clear every religion seems to know that there's something evil in the world. They're wanting to break out of it. You know, they're they're clear that they see suffering in the world. The Buddhists, the cure of suffering is to eliminate all desire, to eliminate yourself. Then you reach nirvana. Everyone wants to get, everyone sees there's something wrong. It's because it's sin. It's sin. And and we need to come to that awareness of the reality of that and, and, and preach to the people who are trying to force themselves to think everything's perfect so then their life can be perfect. We know who's perfect. We know who can perfectly help them. It's Jesus Christ. We know that those people who are going through these things, who are trying to just drill it into their mind over and over that I'm, I'm perfect, I'm perfect, I'm perfect, because there's something horribly wrong with them. The Lord wants to speak directly to them. The Lord wants to prophetically use you to speak directly through them so they can actually receive the healing that they're wanting. And even the people in, in, who are leading these religions, the Dalai Lama and such, they, they, they communicate with demons. You know, there are videos that they're manifesting demons around. They communicate with spirits. They believe in the pantheon of gods and goddesses who give them information. This is all the same stuff as the Greeks. This is all the same stuff since the beginning of time that Jesus Christ has told us. These are demons. These are deities. And you can tell if they serve Christ or if they don't serve Christ. It's very, very simple. That's the simplicity of the gospel. And even before God came to earth as Jesus, he, he walked. Enoch walked with God. You know, Enoch was, was conversing, was new God. He was literally taken up into heaven without dying. Number seven, which I was saying, this is preparing for the one world religion. Most people believe that the new age and the United Nation even talks a lot about new age philosophy. Many new age teachers from the 40s and 30s were writing papers to the United Nations to present papers about the future of mankind, about us achieving peace on the earth. It's about being peace on the earth. It's, it's great intentions. It's good intentions. Little do they know what's actually coming on the earth. If they read the book of Revelation, if they see what's coming before Christ returns, they would realize, you know, the devil's not actually trying to create peace. He's trying to prevent people from knowing the one and only way. There's not many ways to heaven. Your truth isn't my truth. We don't all just need to be tolerant and accepting of every belief system. We need to know the truth. We need to know the the reality of the truth. And we need to speak the truth with boldness against the enemy's attacks on our lives, against the enemy's attacks against our courage and our boldness to actually proclaim what the truth is to offend people. People will be offended. They will get angry. Demons will manifest out of people of extreme anger, of you speaking something, cursing. You know, you watch these street preachers. They're just preaching love. They're just preaching Jesus loves you. And people come up screaming hatred, screaming curse words, yet saying they believe in tolerance and acceptance. It doesn't add up. It's actually not peace because the Prince of Peace is Jesus Christ. And he's not leading that whole entire, you know, agenda to create this world. He told us what the world is going to be and to prepare for it, to prepare for that tribulation. 
Jesus never failed at one point, never at one point morally. He was perfect and is our example. And our entry into heaven was actually bought by him. His sacrifice was the atonement for our sins. People who are, who are trying to believe in this idea that there's many different cultures who believe different things about ethics. No, there's one laws of physics. There's one law of mathematics. And there's one moral truth. There's one moral law. And Jesus Christ perfectly completed that moral law. And when we follow him, we are following the perfect moral law. All these religions, when you see the coexist bumper stickers and you see all these different things where Islam is the same as Christianity is the same as, this is new age. You know, the new agers believe that, oh, actually all the religions are the same. They're just pointing towards the same divine God. You know, and that Jesus isn't the only way, but we all can reach our own way of reaching the divine and we're all going to heaven. But God is very clear that's not the truth. God is very clear that we are sinners and we need salvation and we need the forgiveness of our sins. We can never forget the simplicity of the gospel, the reality of sin and the need for salvation. We can never get too focused on this lifetime of wanting to build a great business, wanting to have a great happy life, starting to get into these self-help principles, starting to get into these self-help books, getting into the law of attraction slowly, just trying to build a better life here. We need to be building for the life to come. You know, we need to be building treasures that moth and rust can't destroy, but that last forever. And that's working for him. That's doing the will of God. That's advancing the kingdom of God and saving souls. That's actually true investing. Investing in cryptocurrency, investing in all these things. You're devoting all of your mind to that. Well, that's not going to last. It's going to get burnt up when the earth is burnt up. But what's actually going to last is the work for Christ. It's the work for the kingdom of God in the spiritual realm. This is true investing of reading your Bible and taking it as truth and actually doing what it says. This is true investing for your eternity. This is true investing for, for, for forever. Now, deception matters. Deception matters. Because deception not, doesn't only just lead to people getting demons, people needing deliverance. It leads to people literally going to hell. People literally going to hell thinking they're doing good. I was thought I was doing good. I, I was all about compassion and love and trying to be a better person. I was meditating all the time, taking psychedelic drugs, you know, trying to explore consciousness, trying to find the truth. Many souls are seeking. Many souls are seeking in this day and age. You go onto the internet, you go onto YouTube, and what's trending is these new age practices. It's these new age teachers. You know, Jesus Christ and the raw gospel and the raw word of God is seen as old and dogmatic and traditional, but it's not true. It's more powerful than anything. It's the most powerful in the entire world, the power of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus Christ. And I just want to encourage all of you that, to not take these things as too hard to understand or, you know, you haven't encountered people in it, so it's not a big deal. You're going to see how big of a deal this is. You're going to see that the rate this is growing. I was in the thick of it. Many of you might not, and many of you who are watching might not understand much of what I'm saying or the importance of it, but it's growing very fast. Gen Z, TikTok, What's famous now is tarot cards, it's witchcraft, it's astrology and horoscopes. The whole thing about astrology and horoscopes is built on reincarnation. You know that you were born during a specific time and the planets were in this specific area. So this is why you have this personality. They're seeking identity. That's why they go to these things. And that as you progress and you learn, your, your, your signs change, your zodiac signs change. So I'm a cancer, but the next time I'd be a different sign if I learn what I need to learn. It's all reincarnation. These horoscopes aren't just some, you know, fluffy duff. They're based in doctrines of demons. And it's not just religious Christianity to say these things. It's logic and it's discernment and it's actually reason explaining why. And when we know why, we don't just say it and then get labeled as, oh, you're just saying it's demonic. No, you're explaining it before you even say it's demonic. You're like, why are you into that? Like, you know that that's based on this and that's clearly not true because this. And then they're like, whoa, before you even say that's not good, they already realized it, you know, and then they don't even need to put up a wall. So understanding these things is, is very, very essential. And I've seen it in my own life. The people who are saved through this form of witnessing through this form that Paul did with the apologetics, with, with the persuasion, with the, you know, the, the arguments, crafting and answering questions is very important. Praying for people and them getting touched emotionally is also very important. 
And that breaks down all intellectual barriers many times. But still, people have these barriers. Satan puts these strongholds in them for a reason. He doesn't spend his energy crafting these deceptions for no reason. You know, he doesn't spend his energy making people think they're doing good, living a happy life, feeling no need for Jesus because, hey, I have everything good. But intellectually, they're deceived. Intellectually, they don't know the truth of Jesus Christ. And that Satan knows he can take that soul. They don't need to come and find deliverance because they feel like everything's okay. But this form of witnessing, this form of knowing the truth, knowing the deceptions that might be in their mind, you can cut to their soul. You can divide soul and spirit with the word of God and you can begin reaching their heart and you can begin letting their eyes be enlightened to their understanding. Now, some of you might be watching this even after or might be watching it right now and you might have believed these certain things you might right now have things that you've read, things that you're doing right now that you know is not the truth, that you know is not of God, that you know is not in the word of God. It's You you think it might be something extra biblical. You think it might be something that the word doesn't fully understand or know about. This is preventing you from knowing Jesus. This is preventing you from fully knowing him because Jesus said, he who is of the truth hears my voice. If you are in things that are not of the truth, you are not hearing his voice. You are not fulfilling the calling he has for you. You are not actually living the way you're meant to live. And it's through these small things, the horoscopes, the tarot cards, the the meditation practice, uh, you know, the obsession with yoga where you're getting spiritual about it. You're not just in it for stretching anymore. You get a spiritual peace when you go. You know, you're actually giving your faith to that. There are these practices that you might have and there are these things that are preventing you from Christ. And I want to encourage you today, if if everyone could just stand up and the worship team could come up to the stage. I want to encourage you today, if if God has put these things on your heart right now, of books you've read, of, of things that you've watched, TV shows that you watched where you're what you thought was the truth growing up about the Bible, what you thought was the truth about Jesus Christ, you doubted it. A little bit of doubt came in about who Jesus is, about what he came here for, about the truth of heaven. And if these deceptions came in right now and they're, they're in your mind or something is blocking you from knowing the Lord, I just want you to keep this in your mind. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. This is the Holy Spirit wanting to know you. This is the Holy Spirit eliminating things that are preventing him from fully having a relationship with you. And if there's anyone out there who who doesn't know Jesus Christ, or if there's anyone watching right now, and you don't know Jesus Christ, you think he's still some enlightened guy, or you thought he was, or you're not fully sure, I want to tell you today, right now, you can know him. You can know the Savior of your soul. You can know the Messiah who came and rose and ascended into heaven and is coming back. You want to know him when he comes back. You don't want want him to come back and you be in, in, in terror. I want to encourage you right now, if that's you, if everyone could just close their eyes, if you are, if you feel like something has entered your life that is not of God, that you've been doing, I want to encourage you right now to to, to come to the front if there's something that you feel you need to repent for, to to just come and lay it at God or to give it to Him right now. If there's some, some practice that you've been engaged in, even in your past, that you want to repent of, if there's something that you used to believe that you still is not really like, you know, you just can't, you don't know why you don't know Jesus. You just don't feel close to him. So you're going to these other things. You're still entertaining these ideas. I want to encourage you right now. Give this to God. Believe in the truth. Read the Bible. Believe in what the Bible says. And if that's you, you where you want to be saved, where you want to know the truth, I just ask you to, to raise your hand right now. If you want to know Jesus Christ, And if you're online, I want you to type in, I want to be saved. I want to know Jesus. I want to know the truth. I'm done seeking. I've found it. This is it. You can decide right now. Just type it in the chat right now. And if everyone could could just pray, pray along with us. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I want you. I believe that you are the only begotten Son of God who came and died for me and rose again on the third day. And Lord, I ask you that you come into my life and make yourself clearly evident. Touch me. Show me who you are. Show me who these people talk about. I want to know you for who you are. And I want to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name.